Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine, and I'm here at the 2011 Northeast Astronomy Forum. Right now I'm talking with Tim Puckett of Apogee Instruments, and uh, every year I kind of ask Tim the same thing when I see him. Tim is a, uh, is a well as repping for the company. He is a camera user and a longtime amateur astronomer. And Tim runs a supernova program, an amateur group of uh, supernova hunters. So every year when I first see Tim, I ask him right off the bat, how are things going with the supernova program? Well, it's going really well. We're still finding them. So uh, we're still sort of successful with it. What are you up to now? Uh, we're getting close to 250 now. 250. That's got to be, as an amateur team, that's got to be a record, right? Well, for a team, we're the number one team, amateur team in the world, right. but uh, there are some individuals that find a lot on their own, but we work as a team. All right, well, congratulations. That's really a tremendous effort. Thank All you. All right, so let's talk about what you got that's new. Well, the uh, main thing we brought, we brought a couple items today that are new. Uh, okay. Uh, one of them is our ascent camera, which is now out in, in production. Um, so the camera is really about the size of the lens. All right. Now you can put a variety of different chips in there? Yes, you can put up to 16 megapixel imager in this device, which is the uh, Kodak 16000 detector. All right. And what about the cooling? Uh, the cooling on these uh, goes to about minus 40 C below with, ambient. With the air, with the fan that's on there? Right. And that's with the fan cooling and the Peltier cooling, correct. All right, and as far as uh, the digitization goes, these are 16-bit cameras? Well, they're 16-bit cameras at the maximum digitization or readout rate at 16 megahertz. 16 megahertz, and didn't you say earlier to me that you could also do it at 12-bit? You do a 16 and 12-bit? Well, yeah, you can run the camera in 12-bit mode, 12-bit uh -huh. or 16-bit. The system also features a live video mode and also has programmable gain and offsets. All right, so you can use the video mode for focusing? Yes, you can use the video mode for focusing. And uh, which is probably going to help out a lot for smaller telescopes with limited fields of view. Okay, make it easier to use. And you said you, just a moment ago you said it has programmable gain. Right, it has a programmable gain and offset. So with the gain, you can program it to if you want to get the maximum dynamic range for an image, or if you want to isolate a particular region of photometry, you can actually set the gain to be appropriate for what it is you want to do. Yes, I think it's going to be particularly helpful in some applications. All right, so you've got two power connect. You got a power connection and a USB cable. Right. We also have our TTL uh, port, which will allow you to trigger exposures from a GPS clock or activate a strobe or, you know, activate an external shutter. So we still kept our TTL port, USB, and six volt power supply. Are there accessories you can get for this? Yes, you can get. Uh, uh, camera adapters such as Nikon and Canon lens adapters. Uh, we also have an eight position filter wheel for this camera. Let's right. take a look at some of the other cameras that you have here. Well, I want to mention our popular models like the uh, U8300 that uh, are in like the D2 body. Uh, all of our, most all of our chips can go into a high cooling package, uh, but we have different sizes. We have a D1 body, a D2, a D5, a D6, a D9, and a D11 and D12. So we have all different types of camera bodies. All right, so this one's what, about, looks about six inches square, maybe that, a little bit more? That's a six inch square body, and it's uh, probably about two inches thick. All right, and this is the one that you said did the 8300 chip, which is really a very popular chip with people today. That seems to be so. a very popular chip with the, uh, the amateur market. Uh, one of the other chips that's very popular with the high-end astrophotographers is the KAF 16803 device. All right. And we call that the 16M. All right, so that goes into the bigger bodies here. Right, that goes into the bigger bodies. You have a choice of getting this in a D7 body or D9 body. All right. In the D9 body, it will cool the, the 16803 chip to minus 65 below ambient Celsius. In a standard body, it cools to about minus 45 below ambient Celsius. Right, so, so, and but, that's with just air cooling. Yeah, with air cooling, uh, has a modified sink on the back of it, has a, a ducting fan going through it over a big heat sink, has a large system of copper block, copper tab. Uh, there's a lot of mass in here to uh, cool down. And uh, frankly, to, to get a chip that size down to minus 65 requires a good bit of horsepower, and that's what you're seeing here in this size body. All right, so I see you've got filter wheels here as well. Right, we have a seven position 50 millimeter square wheel in this configuration, it also comes in a nine position 50 millimeter round. All right, so you can have seven or nine filters depending if they're the square or the round ones. That's right. All right. This one's new. 
Right, this is a 10 position wheel. You can use all 10 positions in this, uh, in this carousel. Uh, basically what it is, it's the same uh, design as our 7 position wheel. It's just a little bit larger and it carries 10 full 50 millimeter uh, filters inside the carousel. Square, 50 millimeter square. And you had said that these have the, the ratcheting mechanism so you get a very precise position. The filter moves to the next position and then kind of backs up against the ratchet. That's correct. This filter wheel moves in one direction and it, it counts with optical and count steps and as it goes to each position what happens is the separate motor will pull it back against a hard detent so you have precise positioning. Realignment of the filters each time. Correct. So if people want more information about these products they can find them on your website? Yeah, the website is ccd.com. ccd.com, that's great. In addition to our products on our website we have a a uh, URL that's CCD University and that's basically a general primer on imaging. That's a good point to make because CCD University it explains a lot of the jargon that people run into when they start looking at CCDs. You've got material on there on... Well there's is a primer to things like dark current, digitization, gain, offset, uh, things like that. It's a very good little primer for people that are getting started. Alright, very good. Well listen, thank you very much thank for you. explaining the stuff. I look forward to talking to you in the future. Thank you very much. All right.